Hello, I'm Shannon Tiezi with The Diplomat, and I'm here today in the Embassy of Kyrgyzstan, where I'm very happy to be sitting down with the Kyrgyz Ambassador, Ambassador Kadir Toktukulov. Thank you so much for joining us, Ambassador. Thank you very much for having me. He is the latest entry in our Diplomatic Access series, where we sit down with ambassadors from Asia and talk to them about the issues uh, facing their country, the region, and the world. So, Ambassador, uh, from Kyrgyzstan's perspective, what would you say are the greatest regional threats that are facing Central Asia right now? Well, despite uh, being uh, geographically not so close to countries like Syria and Iraq, uh, the issue and uh, problems coming from, uh, for example, uh, ISIS or ISIL, as some call it, uh, are not uh, something that bypassed the region or Kyrgyzstan, for example. Uh, we've got up to 300 citizens who traveled uh, to Syria or Iraq to join the fighters of the ISIS. So that is one of the problems that Kyrgyzstan is facing. Uh, so we're trying to identify a uh, source of uh, recruitment, uh, see why people you know, decide to go, for example. But, you know, we are glad at this point that uh, it's not uh, a wider problem and that, you know, not, it's not really affecting wider population of Kyrgyzstan. But we're looking at uh, things like the source of religious extremism and how we can deal with uh, those issues. So what do you think is the best approach for combating uh, extremism, ISIS, these broader concerns? Well, from our experience, uh, what we saw is that uh, people always demand that their uh, freedoms and rights be respected. So it, it is really important that uh, government always uh, makes sure that uh, it doesn't uh, oppress uh, fundamental human rights, uh, political rights, which is why Kyrgyzstan uh, is the country uh, in the region is, that ousted uh, two presidents in a row. It was in 2005 and 2010. That's precisely because uh, corrupt leaders didn't really care about uh, you know, people and uh, problems uh, that uh, you know, demanded solutions and really gave no choice for people to decide you know, what kind of government we will have or what kind of uh, parliament we will have. And in 2010, we moved to uh, have uh, parliamentary democracy. So that uh, also ensures that uh, people have a say in how the country is ruled. So it is really uh, about uh, human rights and freedoms. And also, you know, uh, our government is working hard to make sure that there are opportunities for ordinary Kyrgyz and for the public, uh, to, you know, in terms of uh, businesses, uh, uh, education, employment. So in January, the Kyrgyz parliament revoked an agreement with Russia that would have seen Moscow financing several large hydropower projects in the country. How important are these projects to Kyrgyzstan and what options are there for finding another source of funding moving forward? Yes, uh, the uh, parliament last year uh, made a decision to uh, terminate the uh, cooperation agreement with Russia on uh, construction of uh, hydropower plants. Uh, there were going to be four hydropower plants on uh, Narvin River in Kyrgyzstan. That decision was made after consultations with the uh, Russian government. And you know, we understand that, uh, we understood at that uh, moment that, uh, you know, it was the right thing to do for both Kyrgyzstan and Russia to uh, walk away from that agreement, given some challenges in financing and funding of those projects. Kyrgyzstan is currently uh, working to find uh, other uh, investors or you know, countries that might be interested in uh, participating in construction of those uh, hydropower plants. Hydropower plants are very important for Kyrgyzstan. The uh, energy sector is an important part of our economy. To make sure that uh, our economy grows, we do have to add additional generation capacity uh, in our energy sector. So there is really, uh, at this moment, uh, I don't think that there is a definite uh, solution yet as to who will be uh, participating in construction of those uh, hydropower plants. 
but uh, the government is working hard to make sure that we have uh, investors who will take up those projects. But I also want to uh, highlight that uh, the decision to uh, revoke that uh, agreement to con construction of hydropower plants was not a decision against Russia or against uh, our uh, strategic partnership with Russia. Russia is our uh, most important economic uh, partner, trading partner. Uh, we are in the same uh, Eurasian Economic Union with Russia. So, uh, you know, some were trying to see whether uh, there was some sort of an anti-Russian move, but it's not. Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan all have unresolved border disputes. So how important is it to resolve these issues, and what steps is Kyrgyzstan taking to try to reach agreements with its neighbors? This year, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and all other uh, former Soviet republics will be celebrating the 25th anniversary of their independence. Uh, Kyrgyzstan, in Kyrgyzstan, you know, it is an, uh, an important uh, phase of our development. You know, 25 years is not a short time, but still you can look back and see what you've achieved and sort of plan uh, your future to it. Uh, and it is a little hard to uh, explain why in the past 25 years we have, uh, we're still negotiating as to how the borders will be drawn, and, you know. For example, with China, Kyrgyzstan uh, has had a border agreement. Uh, with Kazakhstan, we do have a border agreement, and it's been demarcated. Uh, with uh, Tajikistan, uh, we are uh, currently in negotiations over borders, and with Uzbekistan, we've been talking about it. It, it, it is critical to uh, regional security that we have, you know, clear borders, uh, you know, we know uh, what you know? How the border goes through the Fergana Valley, for example, because that's uh, you know a, a region which is, uh, as some experts say, overpopulated uh, with you know quite frequent actually uh, conflicts at various levels over uh, water resources, for example, or you know just somebody tried to go from one point to another and because the border line is not clear, it creates some tension there and problems. So it is important for regional security and for border security in the first place to resolve all the disagreements we might have or come to a you know, common agreement over the borders. We can't go on like this you know, for another 25 years without clear borders between us and, and any state is defined by its borders. And I hope we, I mean, it is my government's uh, uh, hope that uh, both with Tajikistan and Uzbekistan uh, in the near future we will come to uh, you know, border agreements that will satisfy or, or, you know, both uh, Kyrgyzstan and uh, our neighbors. Let's turn now to Kyrgyzstan's relationship with the United States. For many years, the U.S.'s approach to Central Asia has been more or less defined by uh, the war in Afghanistan. Um, but that's drawing to a close now. U.S. and NATO forces are drawing down and, and leaving the region. Um, they've shut down the base in Kyrgyzstan. How is this changing the U.S. approach to the region? Uh, and how is it reshaping the us kyrgyz relation? The United States is an important partner for Kyrgyzstan and uh, it was one of the first countries to recognize our independence in 1991. So this year we will be celebrating the 25th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Kyrgyzstan and the United States. Uh, the United States has been uh, important uh, in s supporting development of our civil society, one of the most vibrant in the region, democratic institutions and generally you know, our democratic uh, course. Uh, certainly since 2001, uh, our bilateral relationship has been shaped largely by the U.S. and international coalition's involvement in Afghanistan. You know, we uh, hosted uh, an important military base which departed Kyrgyzstan in 2014. So 
we are trying now to find you know uh, common projects perhaps it will be difficult to find of the same magnitude but some sort of uh, economic projects for example some other projects that will uh, serve as a solid uh, base and a foundation for our bilateral relationship uh, going forward, uh, we would like to see, uh, you know, a kind of relationship that will be meaningful both for Kyrgyzstan and the United States, uh, you know, with uh, respect for each other's interests, uh, you know, and will, will be based and not just on, uh, like before, on the existence of a military base but uh, on our shared values, for example, we're both democratic states. You know, Kyrgyzstan is the only uh, parliamentary democracy in Central Asia, and we believe that you know, there's two democracies, we should be uh, having a uh, you know, closer partnership. I hope that uh, our future uh, will be just uh, you know, as meaningful as a uh, partnership that we had uh, for the past 25 years. Of course, there were some uh, disagreements, some problems, you know, as we say, some hiccups, or you know, the, 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 roads, the road uh, wasn't always smooth, but uh, you know, th this is something that you cannot uh, always avoid in a relationship, a bilateral relationship between two uh, countries. So as you mentioned earlier, Kyrgyzstan is celebrating a, the 25th anniversary of its independence later this year. So what do you think are some of the, the greatest, most noteworthy accomplishments that Kyrgyzstan has celebrated in those past 25 years? One of the best and most important accomplishments is uh, certainly Kyrgyzstan's uh, democratic path. We are the only parliamentary democracy in the region. Uh, you know. We are very proud of our recent uh, last year's parliamentary elections, which were recognized by international community as you know, free and fair. We have six parties in parliament. This is something unprecedented uh, for the region, uh, a real multi-party system. In 2005 and 2010, when we uh, ousted uh, presidents for their corrupt rule, Kyrgyz people showed that uh, we will not tolerate corrupt leaders or leaders who didn't really care about the country's and uh, people's interests and you know didn't really look after the country. So uh, but that, in, in my opinion, is uh, one of the most important accomplishments over the past 25 years. We managed to be and remain a democratic state. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. But thank you so much for joining us, Ambassador. Thank you very much for your time, too. And thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Shannon Tiezzi with The Diplomat.